Welcome to Casco Township Nature Preserve, slightly north of South Haven, Michigan. I forget the road that was one up there north. You just followed it and followed it. There's also some cool trails up there, but it's known for these super steep stairs. Say that ten times fast, or at all, because apparently I can't do it once. Here's the beach looking towards the stairs, and you can see a few artists in their natural habitat, but you can't go there now because the lake is so high and they've actually closed the stairs. You can, however, go on a lot of the trails that are still up north, uh, not north, up, up, just up, up that bluff. You can see them. Here we have a few shots of artists in their natural habitat. Another one dangerously close to getting his feet wet, but he is protected from the sun. So Beautiful waves, beach, beach grass, and what do I paint? Mud. I set up over there with the mud. I just love this little trickle in the side of the hill. I love clay and all the geology and just the textures of everything going over it. I have no clue where this painting is and I probably painted over it by now. However, I want you to take a closer listen. Now, look even more closely at some of these spots in the videos. It's not all about, oh, there it is. There's that Michigan wildlife right there. And I think so those other bits. Butterflies were everywhere, can you drink? On the sand and the clay because they need something to sit on to get a drink. And so they, the wet sand provided a perfect spot for them to just come and sit and have a drink. So, okay, this is what you're actually here for is what I'm doing right here. I'm repainting that whole thing and this little time I'm adding butterflies. All of those I'm going to assume those are monarchs. I'm pretty sure those were monarchs. Although I know there are a couple of butterflies that look just like them that are not. But I'm going to call these monarchs because that's the only butterfly I really know. They're monarchs. Anyway, yeah, but I do know that butterflies can't like sit on the side of Lake Michigan and get a drink because they'd be drowned so they actually need something wet to sit on and they can sit on the sand that's nice and wet and get a drink. There were other crevasses in the bluff just like this one that had more trickles coming down to South Haven and I'm going to miss seeing those because you can't really go back to this location now. The lake has gotten so high in this particular spot that they've actually closed those stairs. The trails above are still open as far as I know and this is just part of the changing landscape of Michigan and I'm glad that I was there and I could record some of those spots to see for you and you can see something that is probably gone now actually that whole bluff has probably eaten away a little bit it's just changed Michigan is and most of the world is just going over this huge season of change the coast wasn't always as we know it anyway. I mean, come on, 200 years ago, it wasn't. It's just changing now. And I also don't really want to go into the whole climate change and who's responsible for what. I want to deal with what exactly we've got right now to show you pictures of places where maybe you can go and explore and you'll find new places like this that are going to pop up and new cycles of growth and places that we can remember and places we can go to but in general I want my paintings and locations that I paint to inspire you to find the beauty in those little spots like there's all of that beach right there there's the waves there's the beautiful fog there were actually like layers of a shore out in the fog that you could barely see in the video that people painted or driftwood or lake things and yet I chose to paint the mud, the mud and the clay. And then I showed you exactly why, that I love that little trickle down the side of the bluff. And then you look closer and there's the butterflies drinking there. They can't drink from the waves. And that was really special to me. So I'm glad I can get these little snapshots with technology and show you these little locations and why they capture my interest and why I want to paint them like that. I wish I could go back. I'm looking forward to finding other little spots like that. 
So whenever you're on the beach, I definitely encourage you to turn around because it's what behind you can be just as exciting as the stuff that's in front of you. Even one of my big paintings that I call South Haven Sunset isn't actually of the beach. Well, it is, but it's not towards the water like everybody else is. They're out on the pier watching the sunset, and I've even had people like do clapping at the end of a sunset because it was just that awesome. That was hilarious and I love that part. But if you turn around during sunset and look back towards the beach, back towards South Haven and sunset, it's just as pretty. And I painted the hill that was lit up so orange with these amazing, it was past golden hour, just blazing colors. So sunsets can be just as pretty behind you with the amazing colors. I hope I do more of those when the sun comes back to Michigan the eighth Wednesday of every third month. It will come back eventually. Speaking of bright colors, you may have noticed both now and way back in the thumbnail before you got bored with this, that I definitely enhanced the colors of this one. I like it. For some reason, the paintings are going almost, I don't want to say cartoonish, fantastical. What is the word for pushing those colors a little too far? To me, this almost looks like it belongs in like a fantasy world, which is fine with me because, because I like fantasy worlds, so there. But pushing those colors, I really like to see. I believe I even saturated the picture in Photoshop when I printed it out. That actually helps me see the variations of colors that my camera can't pick up. Like I said before, I think my camera might be on the way out. I think I've pointed it at something that's been backlit a little bit too much and it's just groaning and pain and hates me and probably is getting old. So cameras do that, even digital ones, they lose their sensitivity, especially when you point them at very, very, very bright things. I mean, who wouldn't start squinting for that much? It gets digital cataracts. I made that up, that's not a thing, but they do lose sensitivity. Uh, hey, I got that camera used for 30 bucks, so honestly, I really can't complain that much. I'd be very curious if that actually is the problem or if it's actually the uh, behind the camera button pusher, you know, that, that kind of problem that's all me not knowing how to use the camera properly. But a lot of cameras don't pick up all of these colors and my camera hates yellows. It all can be a brand thing as well. And honestly, that's where the artist comes in. That's where it comes in that I can make this whatever I want. I could make this a nocturne scene if I want. I could put the moon on it. This is all just raw material for me. I love the location and obviously I took pictures of it because it captured me for a certain reason. And I think I captured that here. I uh, think that honestly, you wouldn't even know there's water there, would you? Except if you knew the location and the fact that the butterflies are landing there and drinking there. That's the only reason that you really know there's water there. It's kind of cracked in there and making this little kind of stream. You can kind of see some wet sand. But I love that little hint at the location. And it's what that brings you to that location and why you stayed there and what you makes you paint about it. That's more important than getting the colors right to me, I think. Depends on what your goal is, of course. If I didn't have a camera, you know, back in the days, you didn't have a camera to get those perfect exact colors and that might have been the important thing, to take a photograph, you know, with paint. But we are so much freer now with the advent of cameras and things like that, that we can play with colors and we can paint something how we experienced it, not necessarily how it was. That was deep. Oh man, my brain hurts. That was too deep. Okay, on to something more light now. Like purples. Purples are light. I'm painting a lot of purples right here. If you have any interest in what the heck I'm using right here, it's a lot of golden paint. Quinacridone magenta. Quinacridone red. That's a big word. It's my biggest word this week. Using a lot of that. You can see that right there. Below that is some Naples yellow, which I hardly ever use for this painting, although it's such a nice light yellow that I can use it to dull purple nicely and it doesn't dull it too much. It's hard to explain. It's one of my favorite colors, but I don't actually use it too much in this painting. I'm also using a lot of ultramarine blue and phthalo blue and white. Lots of white. 
Lots, 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 lots of white. I painted this on top of quinacridone, magenta, quinacridone. Yeah, that stuff. Bright pink, as I usually do because Michigan is so stinking green and blue that I usually use that to knock that down a little bit. Cadmium yellow medium, I believe is also in there. And I think it's a, like a primrose cadmium. I've gotten a bunch of paints for free and I'm using them up. A lot of the blues are not the ones I would normally use that I can't think of right now. Cobalt blue, I believe. It's good cobalt blue, seriously. But I don't often use that color, although it makes some wonderful, wonderful greens. Green gold, however, is one of my favorite ones. You can see me start to put down a little bit of that stuff. It's like that avocado pukish color thing. I love that color. It's kind of natural and spring-like to me, and I also like avocado, so if that helps me remember avocado, that works for me fine. And it's nice, uh, just a, a good, I call it a canned color, when I take that pure color and then mix it different ways and get different tones and hues and spread that out a little bit. So, yep, foliage. I stood there at that little bluff for so long that you saw how the sun just crept over and lit the whole thing up. And I remember getting really toasty rather quickly in the sun. I'm trying to remember what time of year I went. You know, I, I'd be able to check if I looked, but I don't want to right now, so I won't. I do remember it being kind of chilly in the shadow. You see a lot of those wild artists wearing coats. That's partially because it was chilly and partially for sunlight. You probably wonder what people did back in the day when they didn't have sunblock. Well, you've also seen pictures of their bathing suits when they're covered from head to toe. There's a reason they did that. Not just modesty, it was also for sunburns. So you'll see a lot of artists and tree huggers and granola munchers and people like me who are just basically allergic to the sun and glow in the dark who wear layers and layers and layers in the summertime because we will be a boiled lobster if we don't. As much as I also like my sunblock, yeah there's chemicals, eh. I also find it kind of greasy most of the time. I like that spray stuff. I am really digressing now from this painting thing right here. Oh look, more green. Let's get back to the painting part. Um, purples, blues, greens. I'm trying to limit greens here. Mich green. Michigan green can be a problem. For a lot of painters because it's so stinking green and honestly when was the last time you've actually seen a painting that was mostly green hanging in a restaurant or anywhere for that matter when's the last time you've seen a painting probably not anytime too recently which is understandable but when you're able to go out and see some paintings notice it notice what is the general color of the painting take a good old squint that helps limit the details you're seeing and just gives an overall like hue or value to the painting you're seeing. The point is there's not that many giant green paintings out there. So yes, I painted them on something dark and purple and I'm trying to break those up quite a bit, but because there was such a hard contrast up in that upper left corner, I go back and forth up there a little bit because I don't want that to be the focal point. And so I'm kind of smudging out some of those leaves up there, even though they're gorgeous. And I might paint them again and again because I can. And honestly, I love the rhythm of those textures. You've got these froofy leaves that are coming over the bluff, just making layers and layers and they're draping. And then you've got some of those roots that are draping. And you've got these chunks of rocks that are being cracked apart by this teeny tiny little trickle of water and clay there's lots of clay in there and it's just seeping through the sand and you can follow out that little stream all the way to Lake Michigan which doesn't care because it's full of giant waves and it just swooshes out that whole stream and kills the butterflies that try to drink from the lake so butterflies butterflies are coming up soon I add them drinking a little bit from the streamish thing I don't know what to call it there weren't that many all at once, but you don't know that. That way you can actually see the little boogers right there. I don't think one actually landed on me and terrified me like that one bug that crawled up my leg. Anyway, 
This whole piece is eight inches square and I should be putting on my website and website store fairly soon. You'll see some more links and descriptions below as per usual, like every other person does on YouTube. If you like this, well, you know what to do. Thank you all for watching and sticking with me. Love to see your favorite thoughts about your beaches. Ta-da! Oh hey, you're uh, still here? Cool. Well, if you like my paintings this much, you su should subscribe or check out my website. Seriously, you're still here. Thanks for sticking around. Bye.